Welcome to Post Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to assemble this TP swing and slide set. So the first thing to note is that this swing and slide set comes in a five piece set. You've got the long timbers in two packs, but they did actually come bound together. You've got a box with some smaller timber pieces, the slide itself, and then another box with all the metal parts of the swing. Here I'm just trying to remove a sticky label. Now if you are struggling with this, you can just use some white spirits. Why they use such sticky labels, I've got no idea. So amongst the tools I'm using are a cordless impact driver, cordless drill, a socket ratchet set, a knife, a pencil, measuring tape, some wood drill bits, some impact driver bits, a spirit level, hammer, lump hammer, and a few other tools that will assist me along the way, but we'll take a look at those throughout the video. So here I'm just using the knife to cut open the box. Then personally I like to stack up all the timbers with the same timbers in the same pile so it's nice and neat and we know where we are. And then if you look here I'm just pointing at some holes that are pre-drilled in the timber and this allows you to work out which pieces are exactly the same as the others. And here we've got two bits of timber that look like parts for the swing but they're purely packaging. Then I continue to unpack neatly, there's two more bits of timber packaging and some cardboard which can go in the bin. On unpacking the final box you'll find all the parts for the swing, the metal brackets that hold all the large timbers together and the instructions. So now that you've fully unpacked you can go to the instruction manual and it'll tell you exactly what parts and fixings you should have present and you can cross reference them with the parts you've put on the floor. So now to begin with the assembly, you need to take your two metal brackets, two lengths of timber, it tells you the distance to leave, the drill bit to use, how deep to do the drill bit and what screws to use. And it also shows you a quick cross sectional area to explain it in more detail. So taking a closer look at the metal brackets, you can see there are pre-drilled holes. Now just ensure you choose the right metal bracket to correspond with the instruction manual as one bracket is slightly different to the other two. Then take a 5mm wood drill bit and this needs to penetrate 20mm into the timber. Take the FA8439 screw and a 13mm socket driver bit for the impact driver and just drive those coach screws into the pilot holes. You can see that the edge of the bracket is flush with the top of the taper on the timber. Now measure 225mm and mark with a pencil, then take the second bracket and we can push this up to the pencil mark. Now we need to ensure that all the holes on the top of the brackets line up with each other before fixing the second bracket into place. To do this I'm just using my spirit level as a straight edge and marking a few guidelines. And then a quick bonk with my hammer to line them up. Then one final check with the spirit level before securing the bracket into place. And again use a 5mm wood drill bit to drill the holes and use the coach screws that we used earlier. Using my knife I cut the plastic straps and release the timbers. So now decide which end of the post you want to be the bottom, measure up 119cm, drill a hole using a 5mm wood drill bit and drill it 20mm deep. You can see here that our already assembled section of swing goes over the top of these posts, so I'm going to do that first and then drill the holes. So with the holes drilled and two legs already pushed into the brackets, I move the swing roughly where it's going in the garden. I then place the other two legs into the bracket and push up sideways into place. And you'll notice in my situation the ground isn't perfectly level so I make a few minor adjustments to try and get the legs nicely into place and off camera I also packed under some of the legs with a bit of soil. This is just a bit of trial and error according to the surface you're putting your swing on. And once you've got the swing positioned exactly where you want it it's now time to fix some brackets to the holes we drilled earlier. And here's the brackets we've got to fix to the post and they're the PR9740 and the PR9741. So these are what the brackets look like. Now two brackets have one code and the other two brackets have the other code and that's simply because they're the opposing angles. And to fix these to the post we're going to need four coach screws with the code FA8380. We secure this bracket with the top bit of plate flat. First of all insert the coach screw by hand and then continue to drive it in with the socket bit for your impact driver. For now leave this bracket loose so we can move it up and down and we can make some fine adjustments later on. And then fix the other three brackets to the timber in exactly the same way. 
Now we need to assemble this timber frame that's going to sit in the brackets that we just fixed to the timber legs. And oddly some of the timbers are labelled up as MW2289 but the long lengths of timber don't have a code, however I'll show you those in a second. We need to drill the timbers with a 3mm wood drill bit as shown in the instructions before screwing them all together. So you can see the timbers have sticky labels with codes on them and the timbers we need are 0226 and 2289. So these longer sections of timber have pre-drilled holes, we need to hold those up to the other lengths of timber and using these holes as a guide, drill through into the other sections of timber. And for this we're going to use a 3mm wood drill bit and we're going to use it with our cordless drill. Then I remove my socket bit from the impact driver and replace it with a posi drive bit for use with a screw. Then we need to use six FA9761 screws. Then push the screw through the pilot hole, leaving it sticking slightly proud. Then you can line the tip of the screw up with the hole that we drilled in the other piece of timber. Then use your impact driver to drive the screw into place. Then if required, give the timber a quick twist. And now you can screw the other pieces of timber together. So now we're going to take the frame that we just made and sit them on the brackets that we secured to the legs earlier. And when you fit this frame into place just make sure that the pre-drilled holes are at the bottom of the timber so they line up with the hole in the bracket. Then we need to rotate this timber leg around until it lines up perfectly in place for the bracket and we can obviously do this because we haven't fixed this post at the top yet. And then we can make some vertical adjustments by moving this bracket up and down before tightening up. So now we're going to take the FA4517 screws and we're going to screw upwards through this bracket into the underside of this timber frame. We're also going to take the FA9761 screws and screw through into the side of the frame. And you'll notice I've only driven the long screw partly into place. This helps hold the bracket in position before securing the bottom screws up from underneath. I'll then work my way around all the brackets before levelling the frame up and then drive the long screws fully into position. Now one of the quick points to make is not to over tighten your screws. When screwing with an impact driver onto a metal plate there's always a danger of over tightening, tearing out the thread and the screw will go loose. So just go easy. So here I've just raised the back legs up slightly with a bit of soil and I've actually dug two slight dips on the front legs. This is to get the swing set level. I'm lucky enough I can do this with my garden but my advice is try to get it as level as possible before securing up all your screws. So still some screws and coach screws to tighten up, but before that I put my spirit level on the frame, check that it's level, that's more or less level so I'm happy with that, and then we tighten up all the screws. So we now need to take a 5mm wood drill bit and drill some pilot holes through these holes here in the brackets. Then take the remaining four FA8380 coach screws and drive those into the holes. And again I'm using a 13mm socket bit in my impact driver to drive in the coach screws. Now we need to take the FA8439 coach screws and screw them into the holes in those metal brackets that we didn't do earlier. Before I do this I'm just using a block of wood and a lump hammer to secure these posts into place. Then using a 5mm wood drill bit we drill some pilot holes ready for the coach screws. Then again use our 13mm socket bit in the impact driver to drive the coach screws into place. So now we're going to secure the deck boards to the timber frame. We need to line up the first deck board flush with the front of the timber frame and we need to space the first five deck boards 13mm apart. Then we just evenly space the rest of the deck boards as seen in this plan view. So the timbers are the MW2290 and there should be 14 of these and the screws we need are the FA4517 and there should be 28 of these left as we did use a few earlier. So these are the FA4517 screws and these are the 2290 decking timbers. As you lay out the decking timbers you'll notice there's sticky labels with the code on it. To save removing these labels one by one I just turned the timbers over so they're hidden out of view. And now with the posi drive bit in my impact driver and the timbers evenly spaced I begin to drive in the screws. So as mentioned earlier I'm spacing the first five timbers at 13mm just using a measuring tape to do this. Then I just lay out the rest of the timbers by eye and once I'm happy with the spacing begin to drive in the screws.
So with that complete, we now need to fit the steps. Now there's four steps. We're going to drill some pilot holes using a three millimeter wood drill bit. The first step needs to be positioned 70 millimeters from the bottom of the platform. So here's the step with the code 2291. And if I turn this step around, you can see there's a decked edge and this decked edge needs to face upwards. And we're going to use the FA9768 screws to secure the steps into place. Now I found it easier to measure down 70 millimeters and actually draw a pencil line on top of the step. And this way it's easier to hold it up to the line when I'm drilling my pilot holes. then drive the screws through the steps and into the pilot holes. You'll notice I left the first screw loose, that's so I can twist the step up until it's level, screw the second screw into place and then go back over the first screw and tighten it up. Then measure down 236 millimeters and draw another pencil line. And this will mark the position of the top of the next step. And then just repeat the process. So here you can see what I mentioned earlier, by leaving that first screw loose, you can pivot the step until you get it to the desired level and then tighten the screw up later on. Then measure down again 236 millimeters, mark a pencil line and repeat the process. And then the same again on the final step. So now we're going to fit the sides to the platform. And the timber codes are 0218, 0219, 0220 and 0221. And the screws for this job are the FA4517. We also need these PM8387 plastic toggles. So here's the instructions which show how it goes together. We need to fit the bottom piece of timber on the platform. Then we need to measure up 600 millimeters to the top of the top piece of timber and fix that in place. Then we just evenly space the other pieces of timber. Then we've got to position these plastic toggles along the slide side of the posts. And we fit these to the top of each slat, 10 millimeters down from the top of the slat and 20 millimeters in from the post. And we fix these in place using the FA4527 screws. And that's what they look like from the outside of the frame. And that's what they look like from the inside. So now we're going to take the thickest timber pole, we're going to place the swing brackets over the pole and then we're going to slide it loosely into the metal bracket. So we've got a 10mm space then the bracket, 10mm space and a swing bracket, 445mm swing bracket, 370mm swing bracket, 445mm swing bracket and for the glide ride swing we measure 5 to 1mm from the end of the timber and we position the glide ride bracket there. Now we need to use a 5mm wood drill bit to drill some pilot holes through the metal bracket. So using my knife, I cut the plastic straps and release the timbers. So I take the largest timber and push it into the remaining metal bracket and I then use a piece of timber and a lump hammer to help it into place. Now it's highly likely that you'll find your timber a bit warped. So in my case, I wanted the warp or the bend to go upwards to give it the most strength. So the bend was being pulled downwards while the swings are on it. So you'll notice that I'm tapping the bracket round to get it exactly where I want. So here's your bag of swing brackets. They come with some coach screws and a spanner. So we've got the FA8380 coach screws, PR7757 swing brackets, and as we just saw, the spanner. However, as you've seen throughout the video, I'll be using my own tools as I don't really rate the ones provided. So there's the swing brackets, the coach screws, and one of mine seems to have the end missing. And while I slide the brackets on the timber, I'm gonna put the smooth face of the bolt facing forwards. So I slide all the brackets onto the end of the timber. Then I mark my measurements onto the timber using the instructions and then draw around the swing bracket exactly where I want to screw it into place. Then I do exactly the same for all the other brackets. So just to show you that a bit closer, you can see I measured down the correct dimensions using the instructions, marked around the bracket, did the same again, marked around the next bracket, and so on. I haven't actually marked out the position of the glide swing because I'm going to assemble it all first with the swings in place and then I'm just going to mark the center point with it in situ, which I think is easier. I'm using a five millimeter wood drill bit to drill some pilot holes. Then take the FA8439 coach screws and using my 13 millimeter socket bit and the impact driver, I drive them into place. So for this next bit, you want to line the top pole up on as flat a surface as possible because when we finally screw these swing brackets into place, you want them to hang down with gravity. So when in position, they are hanging down vertically. 
So first we need to tighten up these nuts by here and we can use the spanner provided but I'm going to use my own ratchet socket set and then once rotated in position we'll screw the coach bolts through that hole in the bracket. So for this I'm using my 70mm ratchet spanner. Then using my spirit level as a straight edge I just tap it with a hammer to line up all the nuts and the brackets before tightening fully into place. And then I carry on doing the same for all the other brackets. Once done if you hold your timber up like this all those bolts should all line up perfectly. So using a 5mm wood drill bit and my cordless drill we drill through the pre-drilled holes in the metal brackets. Now we're going to take these coach screws and using my 30mm socket bit on my impact driver I'm going to drive these into the holes we just drilled. If for whatever reason you end up with a broken coach screw like mine it's best to drive in a full length one first this will get the hole started take it out and then push the short one through after. So we now need to take the remaining two timbers which are the legs and place them into the metal bracket then using a 5mm wood drill bit drill through the hole in the bracket then take the FA8439 coach screws and drive into the holes using your impact driver. So now you need to take that top ridge timber and push it into the existing bracket on the other section of the swing. To do this you may need a step ladder and you can see as well I'm making a few fine adjustments. I even need to use the lump hammer to tap it into place at both ends just to make sure everything is secure. I even had to pack under those two legs with soil just to raise the timber up slightly to keep the swing level. Once in position we need to take a 5mm wood drill bit and drill some pilot holes. Then using the FA8439 coach screws, drive them into place with an impact driver. Then line up your plastic slide and centre it on the decking. So you want to position the slide so there's a slight gap here between the timber and that plastic. And this is because if you set it too far back it's going to go through that decking and down into thin air. We want the screw to drive down into our piece of 2x3 which is right by here. This will give it a really nice solid fixing. So now take the remaining two FA9768 screws. And I'm using my posi drive bit and my impact driver to drive these screws into place. So with the slide centred and square we can now drive the screws into place. You need to be particularly careful not to drive the screw too hard or it will crack the plastic on the slide. So now take your swing seats with the rope, cut the cable ties with a knife and we can now hook these metal brackets over the brackets on the swing frame. So now get all the remaining pieces of your glide swing, lay them out on the floor like we did earlier with the timber so that all matching parts are together and now we know exactly where we are. Then we have this bag with all the fixings inside, every fixing is coded on the front of the bag. I like to take all the fixings out of the bag and place all the same fixings together. Then here's a few tools provided, we've got a socket, an allen key, a spanner, and the allen key can be placed through the socket to provide a lever for the socket when tightening things up. But again I'll probably use a mix of these tools and my own. So although this sounds obvious, for the next bit it really is best just to try and follow your specific instructions as it's all laid out quite clearly with some nice diagrams. However, I'll still attempt to guide you through the process. We place a metal washer under the head of the bolt, we place that through the metal bar, then we add a nylon washer, place it through the other bar, another nylon washer, back through the bar and then we place the screw into the end of the bolt. Then do exactly the same through the other hole in the same format and it should look something like this. So now we're going to put together the seat of the glide swing and again really this is a case of just trying to follow the instructions, I'll obviously try to help you as well. So place the metal washer under the head of the bolt. Place the bolt through the plastic seat, then place the bolt through the metal tube that we just assembled, then tighten together using the locking nut. Just to point out these are the 35mm screws, then do exactly the same for the hole above, and then repeat the process for the opposing piece of plastic on the other metal tube. Then with an allen key placed in one side and either a socket or the spanner provided on the other, we can tighten them all up. Now place a metal washer over the 40mm bolt, then we'll place this through the plastic seat and through the metal tube, tightening up with the nut on the end. Repeat the process through the other hole, and again using an allen key in one end and the spanner on the other, tighten up. So again this really is a case of following the instructions, and we want to take these two remaining metal bars, we fix them in place with the metal bars curving inwards, we're going to use the fixings shown in the instructions to attach them to the metal bars that we've already assembled, and this is exactly what they look like here. These are the fixings, with one tube slid over the other we place the fixings through the hole securing them together exactly as shown in the instructions. Then with an allen key placed at either end, tighten up. These metal parts clamp over the top timber like this and these are the nuts and bolts we need to fix it together. And this is how it goes together as shown in the instructions. And we're going to centre this in the gap between the swing and the slide and I'll show you what I mean now. 
So I measure between these two metal brackets and mark a centre point with a pencil. Then I place the clamps around the timber. Using the nuts and bolts we tighten up loosely. Then we line it up with my pencil mark, ensure that it's aligned vertically and then tighten up. To do this I use the socket provided on the one side and the allen key on the other. Once tightened up this is what it looks like on the one side and this is what it looks like on the other. Then using a 5mm wood drill bit and my cordless drill we drill pilot holes through all the holes in the brackets both front and rear. Then I take these coach screws and drive them in using a 13mm socket bit in my impact driver. Now take these green plastic fittings, we need to take the plastic bushes and push them into the metal tubes and then we fix these up to the bracket using this coach bolt and nut. So you'll notice here that the bolts go through from opposing sides and on the flat head side it sits into a square shape in the metal bracket. This means it holds the bolt tight while you tighten up the nut on the other side. So finally we can put the flag into place. We need to trim off the ends from this plastic base bracket. Then position this centrally on top of the frame and screw in using the screws provided. Then just push your flag into the bracket. So here are four anchor brackets which are provided with a kit which I'm not actually going to use. If you do use them, the instructions show you exactly how to do it. They say to dig out a 300 by 300 by 300 millimeter cube in the ground. You fill it with concrete, set in the brackets in the concrete, and then you secure the brackets to the base of the timber legs. So there we go, that's it all complete. Now if you're interested in this TP swing and slide set, I'll put links to it in the description section below. If you're interested in any of the tools I use in the video, I'll also put links to those in the description section below. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and press that bell icon for regular notifications. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell.